Hello everyone and welcome to this evening's session or at least it's evening for us here down in Hampshire. Um, thank you for taking the time out to come and join us uh, and also a little apology. We suddenly, our, our go to webinar uh, refused to cooperate. Um, David couldn't log in, I couldn't log in. You may also have had a message to uh, telling you to try again. So, as I said, no idea why that happens and um, whatever the reason, uh, we do apologise. Anyway, for, let's open it up again. As always, before we can start, may I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen. As you know, trading can be a very risky business, so please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. As always, we are going to be looking at um, the US markets. We've got some stocks, we've got some commodities, we've got some general uh, information and about what's happening uh, in, uh, and in the markets from a sort of fundamental sort of sentiment perspective. I think David's also, we're going to look at some indices as well. Um, not doing Forex, Forex is for tomorrow morning. We try, we may, mm, make a passing reference to something like you know the US dollar or the Japanese yen but we really just want to focus on these three uh, the other three other capital markets so the third one being the bond market but before we start can I just say let me see let me see where are we I need another another browser over here just to have a quick uh, a run around to see what has been happening today, as always, uh, investing.com is just you know, a brilliant site because it's free and you can pick up, um, you know, what's happening on a literally on a minute. It is live data. And as I said, for it to be free and they practically have um, a chart for any market and any instrument that you can think of. And it's the quickest way to go engage uh, what sort of you know what what sort of what's the sentiment out there at at the moment? Well, the um, the Dow has been down. It's uh, it's kind of a claw trying to claw its way uh, back up again. This is the futures and this is the actual cash market. The S and P as well. That's only down six. What's interesting is the VIX. The VIX is actually at a um, it's not at a sort of scary level. Um, and in fact, it's I would say it's a little bit low. Would you say, David, considering at what where the um, uh, you know where the, where the markets are we, with the, the losses that we've had today, we would have expected the VIX to be to be much higher. So the VIX is something that you look at because it, when it does start to go on a tear, then you know you know markets are in serious trouble. Um, generally speaking about, about markets, although they are slightly down, I think the Nasdaq, I think the Nasdaq is the only one that's actually positive at the moment. And uh, David's going to talk about uh, the Nasdaq as well. And I had a, a tweet come through saying, you know, looking at the the shape of the chart there, are we seeing a, you know, a, head, um, a double top or is it actually possibly starting out, you know, going to provide the base for a nice breakout and we've mentioned it before uh, we do have this seasonality at the moment and by that I mean once you know we've got Thanksgiving coming up uh, not I don't think it's next week it's at least it's very late this year it's at the end of November and then it's the last few weeks in the run-up to the uh, to Christmas holidays and traditionally, it's always been um, you know, what they call Santa's rally. So markets like to stay positive despite what may, may be going on in the background, and they will make every effort to you know, stay elevated. Now, there is a Fed meeting uh, in December, and we do have the example of 2018, I believe. I'm pretty certain it was 2018 when we had a um, we had a, a pretty dramatic sell-off just before Christmas because I think the Fed put up interest rates. And to give you a summary of what to um, what to look out for with regard to you know the markets generally, the markets will keel over in a very dramatic way when there is no longer cheap money. At the moment, money is very cheap and you know, we've, central banks have been talking about raising interest rates, but they're only talking about raising them a very, very tiny fractional amount um, because inflation has come in very hot. Um, it's at the CPI is at levels not seen for I think you know, I think nine years or something. Um, we all know things are expensive. 
um, and getting more expensive energy, fuel, um, stuff, everything, you know, you, you name it, and it costs more than it did before the pandemic. Part of that is because of there has been a huge problem with um, uh, with supply and you know people are there's been there has been also this pent up demand the, the part of the inflation has also been driven for stuff because people have been they haven't spent their money on the things they would normally spend because we've all been locked up um money has been given out by governments in support so that's also looking for a home as as it were so it's a lot of a lot of different factors as it were today and uh, so this thing about about inflation um you have to it could actually go either way you know we could see a situation where maybe we have deflation further down the line but at the moment it's you know whatever the numbers are at the uh, at at this present time the numbers are going up here in the uk in europe and also in the states and practically you know uh, in other economies as well so central banks have to deal with what they see in front of their eyes how has that affected the market well not really partly because we have this seasonality it's kind of saying yeah yeah it's inflation but you know we we like to end the year on a on, on a high note and is the fed actually going to um you know is it really going to put up interest rates this year and they keep pushing it back and, um, and pushing it back so until that cheap money dries up the markets are going to stay positive yes we're going to get corrections but people you know people will be stepping in and possibly buying the dip so it's a very curious time that we are living it's been a very curious time the last 18 months or so you need me to tell you uh, and you need to sort of keep an eye on what they're actually saying all the the members of the fed and today has been one of those days where you know everybody's been out talking with comments etc cetera, etc cetera. but that's awfully interesting that's all going on in the background uh, but it's some um, it's the kind of background music if you like to what is actually happening on the charts right i think we can see all the main news is is out of is out of the way as i said we've just got we've got various uh, fed speakers i think we've still got a few earnings coming through but all the main earnings are now uh, done and dusted so as i said it's you know the market is now looking for we've got thanksgiving then we've got black friday and then we've got this run down to the holidays but we do have this fed meeting i think it might even be on is it christmas eve i'll have to look at the at the, at the date okay so that's my just general quick roundup of uh, what's what now today what i'd um, what i'd like to cover what i'd like to cover before i pass over to david is i'd like to um i'd like to just go over a couple of stocks uh, that i have been uh, that i've picked out from finviz if you remember those of you who haven't been coming before um what we have to do with stocks is obviously we have to find some kind of filtering system um i view i use finviz and i'm actually going to look and a look at stock beep as well it's it's a site that i mentioned oh weeks ago but i haven't referenced it recently um just for a couple of uh, a couple of points that you may like to sort of take on board and and you know uh, explore um, in a little bit more detail yourself um, the parameters I have are very very uh, straightforward I just look at anything that's been trading over a million and I use a relative volume of one and a half and it's, uh, it's the great thing about Finviz is if you come across an expression that you don't understand you just highlight it and it explains what it's ratio between the current volume and the three months average intraday adjusted and basically it's you know basically the volume is one and a half times more than you would expect um, and it just tells you there's lots of activity which is what you want for trading i haven't looked at liquidity some of these stocks are small cap stocks possibly if at, at the moment liquidity is something that we don't really i'm not saying you don't have to worry about it's just because the market is so bullish you know everybody just wants to buy 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 um you know liquidity is probably something to be aware of but 
you know, just not to be too concerned. But if the market changes and changes dramatically, then your stock selection, I would say liquidity, you really do have to look at that and look at that. And by that I mean is essentially um, you want to stop you look at Apple, for example, I mean, it's got millions and millions of, of stock so, and there's always going to be a demand for it. But if you go into a stock that is perhaps very new, um, it's got low liquidity, it's going to probably be more volatile. But when you want to get out of it, it's, it, could be, it could be tricky. You will, but it will come at a, at a price. Um, last week, I think it was last week or the week before, we looked at patterns and one of the patterns that we looked at was using the hammer candle and in particular hammers don't always play out and I just I've got a really nice one where it has played out it's uh, one that uh, is called a butterfly network so I'll just uh, pull that one up I also want to have a look at uh, Home Depot and I also want to look at uh, some stocks where there have been a massive, massive amount of volume. I mean, I am talking serious numbers, numbers that, you know, I haven't seen around for uh, a long time. And they all came up under the um, auto manufacturers. They, they're part of the consumer cyclical. But when I was doing a, a, a quick run through FinViz, I suddenly noticed that um, this uh, sub uh, is consumer cyclical and it's a subset of the consumer and it's the auto manufacturers and auto parts. And if you have a look at them, this is L LCID and you've got here, you've got RMO, but look at the volume that's gone in. I think 170, where's this one? LCI, L LCID, we've got 173 million. I mean, what on earth is going on? And they are not the only ones because um, this is another one, GOEV, 64 million. What the heck is, they've also been picked up by, by Stockbeat. I have no, I have no, I'm gonna have to research, Fisker, GM. Look at these numbers. These are, these are crazy numbers. Uh, and I've never ever, I've never, sort of seen such a concentration of volume going into this sub sector it's just one of the something certainly to uh, to consider and to look at and to in, and to investigate further and using something like finviz you you look at the um you know you look at the charts and you think heck you know because we look at the chart, we look at the volume that's going in, and we look at what pattern has then been created by that volume. Somebody left a message on YouTube and said they had the book, the, 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 the VPA book, but you know, what to do next? And the what to do next is to look at charts, is to, uh, with or without indicators, I think you really need support and resistance indicators because support and resistance is a huge part of VPA. And you look at charts and what you try and do is you try and spot the VPA signals, the VPA setups that are covered in the, in the, uh, in the different books. And it's only by doing that, you will actually then uh, begin to absorb the methodology and it just becomes second nature when you look at uh, uh, what the can you know the candle relationship to the volume that you are seeing uh, uh, you know uh, that's that's um, that's been displayed so another way of using finviz and um, when I said about stock beep which is up here I said I haven't really how's it gone was it gone was it gone let's have a look I seem to have mislaid it. Oh, here we are, unusual volume. There we are. Um, not just, uh, where was it, Geo, GOV. I think it's dropped out. I think that's why it's, it's, it's fallen, but because this is updated on, on a on a hourly, whatever it is, basis. And um, it actually came up with, and, and they were all highlighted. And there are others that you can highlight. And you can see there are some stocks here that, you know, this one here is, 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 a, is, is, a, bio, is, is a biotech stock. It's got a, a relative volume of 80.6. Stock selection, it's selecting what to trade and what to invest is probably the most difficult, you know, thing to get your head around. 
David and I, as mentioned, we are going to be putting together a stock program to uh, uh, very similar to what we've done with the Forex program. And this is that element of it is possibly it is the most important uh, element because what you want is, is you, you know, you want to get to a situation where things have exploded, but you want to be in before they do so, you want to have put them, be able to put them on, on a watch list. And we've been using um, chart patterns, uh, things like saucer pattern, things like the hammer, uh, 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 the hammer candle, looking at combinations of candles. So that's what uh, we'll be focusing on quite heavily in the program, along with other things as well. So before I actually go to the, um, the uh, butterfly um, chart, and I've got some other charts as well. Um, I'd also want to have a look at um, looking at v how VPA, using VPA when you have gaps, because obviously in the, with stocks, this is uh, you have gaps, uh, particularly around earnings. Um, in, the, in the forex market, you do have gaps, but they only tend to occur at the open on a Sunday if there's been a, a, a huge bit of news uh, that's um, uh, to do with a particular currency. But obviously, in the stock market, they, they are all over the place. And gaps can be, they can be gaps, and they are traps, very much so. But if, if you, if you, if you look at the uh, the volume and what the VPA is telling you, you can make them work in your favour. And there's a really, really nice example on a, on a um, one particular chart that I just want to bring up. Before we have a look at the charts, there's one final um, thing that I've not mentioned before, and it's a site I was doing, I was trawling around and looking for bits and pieces, and because I'm also doing a lot of research into um, putting together resources that will go into the program. This is either primarily free, maybe we'll have to also include some subscription ones because, you know, there's only so much you can, you know, go with free. Although having said that, there's masses of information out there. And I was looking at, again, at the, uh, the indices and um, the, the components of the indices and what are the weightings for things like the Dow, the NASDAQ and the S&P. And just refreshing my memory as to what are the top companies, because we're in this massive bull market at the moment. Everything is going, everything is you know, going up, up, up. But what's interesting is that if you actually look, let's have a look at the, at, at the NASDAQ, and this applies equally whether you are going to be trading individual stocks or even investing, or you are looking at futures and you're perhaps looking to trade an, an index, as, as it were. Um, to actually look and, 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 and get a handle on what are the weightings? So we've got 100 stocks in the, uh, the, the NQ, the NASDAQ 100. And you go through the 100 stocks. And when you actually start doing the maths, if you look at, you've got Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, you look at the top, say the top six, for example. Here we are. I mean, let's, let's stop before. Let's, uh, let's include uh, Google. A go Some that applies twice, I think Google's got two. It's got Alphabet, Inc, and it's Google, it's those two. But basically, it's, it's all Google. Microsoft and, and, and Apple, obviously, and you just add them up. So you've got 11, 11 uh, 21, 28, 33, 33, 38. 30. If you think about it, these are 100 stocks. The top six or seven is 50% of the weighting. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you if you are going to trade the index, the future, um, and you're looking at your charts, you really do need to keep a very close eye on what these these heavyweights are doing. And in fact, a lot of the data that's that's you know I get through on emails and what have you is that this this heavy concentration of these moves that we've had in in the markets are all down to a very very narrow number of of stocks is not healthy it isn't because you, if we have a major major correction and you take you know this lot one of these up here 
it could be regulation, for example. I mean, uh, Amazon and, 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 and Google, for example, on a tax situation and their bottom line is going to be severely dented. You can imagine that the any correction is then going to be much, much more severe. From the perspective of an individual uh, stock, you could say, well, OK, I'm, I'm down here. Um, Qualcomm, funny enough, has had a massive in, influx of, uh, of volume. That's only 1.325%. Uh, but what's interesting is sometimes you could, if a stock is doing really well and it's outperforming its, its index and absolutely going, you know, uh, Going, it's, it's sort of cushioned against any dramatic reversal in the index. It's something that we, we're going to be looking at in more detail. It's something I've, I've, I wanted to explore, as I said, for the program. And I came upon this really, really nice site uh, called Slick Charts, and it's free. And the um, the the data as of is of is of yesterday it is delayed so but if you are trading any of the indices any of the futures make sure you have you know what these top stocks are actually doing um, if you look at the Dow Jones again even more concentrated at the top you've got um, the UNH you've got Goldman Sachs you've got Home Depot Microsoft again some companies are in more than one uh, uh, index and you've got Salesforce and McDonald's and it's this is a very much of a value uh, more of a value index it's not a, a tech growth uh, uh, index although Microsoft is I suppose you could say is a is a tech company, and it's got more sort of what I call not old 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 fashioned. They are they are more traditional. Uh, you've got Walmart, as you can see here. But again, the weightings are important, and what it also gives you, which is quite interesting, you've got the component performance. This is the performance uh, the year to date, and what's interesting. <laughs> what's been driving the markets yeah sure the dow has been going you've got goldman sachs has returned 52 uh, 52 percent but if you look at what the uh, what the nasdaq is doing this is where all the this is the growth stocks have, have delivered you've got nvidia you've got uh, moderna you've got the, this is where the big returns have been made i mean tesla's own only 50 percent that's the beginning of the year so there's all sorts of data that you can take from these indices uh, and again you can go down and and have a look but um it's just something you just something to to become aware of to get to understand i'm not talking about passive you know people buy um index funds and and what have you and in a way having said that with an index fund if your index fund is driven higher by such a small percentage of stocks in that particular index i i personally this is just a personal view it's it, it's 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 a little bit worrying you know surely you would want to see they're not all going to be you know moving up or down in at the same rate and at the same speed but for all the growth to be concentrated in such a small number of stocks is is i don't think is healthy i mean david has got probably a view on that as well so right that's something else for um perhaps you know you would like to go and explore further butterfly network i've been looking at i've been looking at the five minute charts when i said earlier about um getting to under you know recognizing vpa vpa is volume price analysis we look at the price action we look at the volume and what we want to see is we want to see agreement because we want to we want to be reassured that the that the move that we are that we are seeing and the uh, the entry point you know the move that we are seeing is genuine and it's not an anomaly and it's not a trap and you can only do this by looking at sections of price action on different charts on on different time frames it's easier on the faster charts because obviously the price action develops more quickly this is just a plain chart all i've got is the price action and uh, the volume so 
what you want to see is when you see prices maybe going lower. Well, you know, if they're going to go lower, it, you just have to look at little sections of price action. And you look at the volume down here. Well, you know, you've got weakness coming in here. Yes, I accept that. Your reason amount of volume. Then you've got this little candle and then the volume suddenly falls away. And you think, well, OK, is that going to go any lower? No. It's only, you know, it's it's a signal and you say, OK, so you wait and then the next candle comes in and oh, lo and behold, and it goes high. We haven't got support and resistance. We don't know if that was a an important support. Like, well, it's a little bit of support down here, but it could have been a Camarilla level. It could be a Fibonacci level. What, however you measure your support and resistance, it could have been a, um, a moving average. Who knows? This is just your volume price analysis. Then it starts to go higher. Yeah, the next one, that's, that looks quite nice. The next one is not so much, but there's a little bit of weakness at the top, but you know, it goes up and up and then it starts to, and then it starts to fall away. But you have this little candle here with a lot of volume underneath it and you think, oh goodness, that's going to reverse. But this is what I mean by the anomalies. If that were all, if given that, that tall uh, uh, red bar down there and that was selling, that should be much wider because you look at a, a, a comparable bar, uh, down bar, which is uh, maybe that one, and you look at the spread of that one and you look at the spread of that one, they're not the same. You say, well, okay, that's what we call benchmarking. We're always looking you know, at what's happened before, what is happening now, because it, it gives us, as I said, these benchmarks, and then it carries on up again. And in fact, we get a really nice little, little run up. Then we get, is this, when is this move running out of, of steam? And in fact, you don't even have to look at the candles. You just look at this and you see this, this step, 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 steps all the way down. And it, it's, uh, it, it, it does actually come to a halt. And this candle here, you think, well, that's still going up. Look at the volume, but look at the spread of the candle. You're looking at the spreads. You're looking at how they relate to the volume. Is it anomalous? both you know on down candles and up candles compare them with what has gone before and you get this little reversal but butterfly the reason for butterfly is this was and we looked at hammers and what i said a couple of weeks ago i said it is actually quite rare to have a a signal you had this uh you had this nice little waterfall first of all you had a, a period of congestion where the volume is sort of dies away the market's not you know it's not doing very much it's just moving sideways then we have the little bit of the waterfall and we have the the volume rising which is what you would expect you also have then have a gap down and you think oh great well that's gap down it's going to carry on lower what happens is you have a really nice wick to the bottom of the candle and you have a ton of volume underneath it. And that's what you want to see. If you see that, sometimes you'll see hammers and you won't see much volume. And I think there was one when there was a, a chart called SFT. There was a nice hammer, but there wasn't any volume underneath it because there's no buying. There's no, you know, the buyers haven't stepped in to stop this price falling. This is what has happened, and in fact, we've had a nice, we've had an up, up move today. Hasn't done very much today, but it doesn't really matter because as long as the as, as long as the relationship between the candle that you see and the volume underneath it is in agreement, it's when it's in, it's when it doesn't agree. So, butterfly, sort of interesting one to watch. I haven't gone into. Um, too much detail of you know the short interest and what have you because I wanted to focus on the on the VPA. So if I just close that down, um, the other one I saw this is Home Depot, which we saw was a, a very big constituent of the Dow. Now hopefully it hasn't disappeared. I've expanded it so you can actually see it. And where was it? Let's have a look. It's on the three minute chart. I think it was pretty much here. Uh, yes, here we are. Oops, that one there. Pretty much here. Uh, let's have a look. This is a little run up here. Again, we have a, a congestion period. Nothing, a, nothing much happening. A little bit of a little burst of activity coming uh, that's been picked up by the tick, uh, tick speed, uh, tick speedometer. David has got some information on that, and we've actually uh, upgraded it. So we've got a, a new version of this, which is uh, which is really really good. And 
on this chart, as I said, I had a bear chart. You start with a bear chart, price action and volume, and a hugely important element of VPA is the support and resistance. We've developed our own indicators. You can do the lines, you can draw the lines yourself on the chart. We've done it because it just makes our life easier. The hatch lines on here are the, the accumulation and distribution indicator. It's not the same for MT45. It is the same on TradingView and TradeStation. And the, 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 the amazing thing about this indicator is that each time a level is touched, and in this case is support or resistance, it gets thicker. And what that tells us is, uh, it gives us an indication of the strength of that level. If you just draw a straight line, you have no you have no idea. I mean, you, you can you can eyeball it. You can say, well, yeah, it's touched it one, two, three, four. Yeah, that must be pretty strong. But having an indicator that, that actually you know becomes thicker the more times it's it's touched, it tells you that is a very very that has become a very strong level of support. When it's in congestion as well, have a look at the little down candles. Um, are there wicks to the bottom of the candle? That means price support is coming in. Obviously, you have price support from the uh, accumulation and distribution. So there's obviously buying, some buying coming in here. But then what you want, what's happening is this piece of price action at this level is actually in a channel. Um, you've got the resistance and it's actually thicker than the than the than the support line but you know what is what is it what is it that it's going to need to break out well it's going to need volume and you want to see the volume rising and you also want to see the activity pick up as well activity picks up in both directions going higher and going lower and this is a really really nice example it was in this channel between very strong price based support and resistance we also have an indicator that gives us volume based support and resistance that's derived from the volume point of control the volume point of control is the fulcrum of uh, uh, the, the chart it's where it's what we call transacted volume at this particular level. Now, this moves. Um, this histogram here, it's not quite a, this sort of goes, goes in and out. So we have high volume nodes and we've got low volume nodes. Where you have high volume nodes, um, you've got more density of volume. And what happens is it's, it tends to sort of, it takes a little bit more effort to get through a high volume node. But this is a really nice example because it does get through uh, the resistance. You can see here the number of times that this was tested on rising volume, which is what we want to see. It goes it, up, it goes. Then we have this little candle here that hits. Um, I've actually got Camarilla on here as well. It hits volume resistance, Camarilla, and you say, okay, well, you know, it's it's a really nothing candle with nothing much underneath it, and then it starts to move higher, and we have this really nice you know a volume coming under here under here under this this candle and you say well it suddenly stopped and that is because it has hit the volume point of control the volume point of control is also of itself both support and resistance tesla is a really good example on my site let me just bring tesla up because that explains it better shows it let's have a look here where am i yes um the Tesla chart, let's have a look, because it's all annotated and it's easy to see. This is uh, this week's um, analysis on it. Um, we called it as bearish and it did. The VPOC has now moved to the $1,000 region, but actually when it rolled over, it was at the 700 level. But it's it's I think it moved up in the last couple of days. Now it's looking underneath the VPOC could be bearish. But what's happened, what happened is under this candle, you can see there's a wick to the bottom of the candle, and I believe now it is above the VPOC. So the VPOC can it's a very, very, very strong area of either support or resistance. It's it's an area that will you will have congestion. Um, and it will be an area from where 
the price will then either break to the upside or the downside. And with regard to these areas of support and resistance, what we also have to remember, as I mentioned last week, is all these levels along here around the zeros, there will be um, investors, traders who say, right, well, I want it to get to whatever it was there. Here we are, 394.50, nice round number. Uh, this is where I think I'm, I'm going to buy or maybe I'm going to take profit. You know, you, you, when you look at a chart, you, you're obviously getting an insight into what the market makers are doing, who are, who are managing the, the, the order flow. Um, but there's also the psychology of, you know, the hundreds and thousands and millions of traders and investors out there who have their own view, who maybe have said, you know, well, I'm going to buy here and maybe I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell there. That's why these levels become important. So this, although there was, as I said, a lot of volume under this candle here, because it came into the volume point of control, it is, you know, you can't just expect it to carry on higher. And in fact, what happened is we did get a candle with even more volume with a wick to the top of the candle. It hit this volume resistance. These bands that you get across here come from, are derived from the volume point of control. It hit uh, uh, this resistance, could have, you know, as I said, could be profit taking, who knows, and down it goes. But what do we get in this little section of price action here? Well, we get, we get rising volume, but look at the candle. It hits a support volume. You've also got a Camarilla level, not a, it's the, it's the R1, it's, it's not the most important, the R3, the R4 levels are more important. But you've got a really nice wick to the bottom and off it goes up again. And it's actually it's actually topped out, as I said, at the we've got volume, uh, the volume resistance here for the from the volume point of control. And these levels are then you then use them to. Well, you know, it hasn't managed to get through here, despite having two wicks to the bottom of the candle and reasonable, uh, uh, you know, volume underneath it. Why? Because support and resistance has to be, you, you have to incorporate it as part of your analysis with the price action and the volume. Now, where is it going? Well, you know, the obvious stopping point is back to the volume point of crop. This is just a three minute chart. This is the kind of conversation you have to have with yourself when you look at a chart. And the conversation it will become natural to you and the conversation also takes away the emotional sting you know the, the, the emotional worry that we, that uh, as traders and investors we we can suffer from when we have money this is our this is our hard earned cash in the market and we want to preserve it and we want to make a return from it but what you don't want is you don't want your emotions of fear and hope to be racked about, um, you know, either, as I said, by market makers and, and just, you just have no idea and, you, you know, you get blind, you have, you go into a blind panic. They, oh, oh, well, I've, you know, I, I, it was going up and it was great and, oh my goodness, and now it's not, hasn't gone any further. Oh my dear, oh my goodness, you know, what am I going to do? You just calm down, take a deep breath. Yeah, it's going to have a pullback, but you know where it's going to pull back from. And then you see this candle and you think, oh, great. We've developed other indicators that help us even more because we have the trend monitor, we have the little trend dots, we have our pivots, uh, you know, because we want to be able to analyze charts and just remain, we manage the, the emotions that are triggered, you know, in this particular in this particular game and emotions are triggered and david and i strongly believe that vpa with all the elements of vpa and we believe with our uh, indicators give you the best chance of being able to succeed Uh, I've just passed over to David. If you've got any questions, then please just pop them into the chat box. 
and we're happy to answer them either in the chat box or on air. The wrong button there. Hi everybody, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, I'll just move that out of the way. Hopefully you can see my screen. Great stuff. Um, I've actually started somewhere completely different um, because, 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 because this is on the 15 second chart, would you believe? Um, 15 seconds, this is on uh, the YM for December contract. So we're on the Dow here, Dow Jones. This is the futures contract for the Dow. And ever since Anna has been talking, which was back here, this is Ninja, so it's very easy to pick out where we started over here, 1901, seven o'clock our time. This was just starting to shape up into a, a nice uh, potential reversal low, which is actually what we got. But the reason I wanted to show you this was, was much more to do with the congestion phase and what Anna was talking about. I've talked about it last week as well. Uh, we had this really nice price waterfall. You've got all the VPA lessons in here that, that really spell it out for you when you're when you're in a position like that and you know you've got a nice bit of profit coming maybe you're in here up at the top somewhere you see this little reversal you think this is going to go far you've got a nice candle you've got a pivot to the top side you've got decent volume under there it doesn't look terribly strong you get a repeat of it here market's trying to rally not looking strong volume under here is good you know it's fine really gives you confidence then you come down to this little bit here what's happening okay we've got rising volume under these three candles which is fine not spreads widening spreads for narrowing a little bit so you're possibly expecting a pause point anyway then the market starts to rally against you and you think am i going to close out is this a reversal i've lost some of the profit i've already mentally banked but the volume is falling away so you've got two candles on the up which are pretty much identical and you've got volume falling so it's a it's a nice confirming signal doesn't necessarily guarantee that that's what's going to happen but it certainly gives you as Anna said it gives you a little bit of comfort VPA is about giving you it's removing some of that emotional mess that you have in your mind the fear when you've got and the biggest fear of all let's face it is when you have a decent position in the market you're making money you've already stuck that in the bank you thought great I've made 100 bucks 200 bucks whatever it is 500 bucks a thousand and you stick it in the bank and then it starts to reverse and you're suddenly from a thousand you're down to 750 and then 650 and 600 and 550 and you think i should have closed out and then what happens the market congests and then it starts to rally again and you're back up to a thousand and you're out of the market and it goes 1500 2000 it's typically what happens and this is you know what it's about and it's why the indicators you've got the trend monitor at the bottom here which has been bright red throughout then we go into the price waterfall. So you're looking at this, you're wondering, you're 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 not sure, you're not you're not certain, but certainly that is giving you some confidence. Then you get rising volume. This is what you want to see: falling market, rising volume, big uh, big uh, uh, um, lump of volume comes in here, and then we go into the congestion phase, which is which is really the most interesting of the of, of all of this chart, because as I've said many times before, around the volume point of control, and this is 15 second bear in mind, so it could be any time frame, but the principles are exactly the same. It doesn't matter whether you're on a 15 second chart or a 15 minute chart or a daily or a monthly. You're into the congestion phase. Now, the thing with congestion is is patience. Now, in this case, obviously, you know, it's not a big deal because we're going from where 1922 to 1934. So, you know, with 12, 13, 14 minutes, we've got to wait and be patient. But this, if this were an hourly chart or if this were a 15 minute chart, you know, this is a lot of candles to be patient through, but you have to be patient. But what the volume point of control does also, it tends to build these very strong levels around here, the resistance and the support platforms. And they work in several different ways. Not only do they give you um, guides as to you know, where the potential takeoff breakout points may be, but this whole wedge of price action also gives you a massive amount of protection if you're going to take a position. If we're going to take a position, in this case, the market broke to the, debt, to the upside. We had a decent amount of buying coming into that candle. We had a bit of a fake here, didn't really reverse, went back up, bashed back into the, the resistance again, came back down again. Then we had some, some stronger buying coming in under this candle. Then we started to take off. Then we got an injection of volume under this candle to really drive it away through this resistance area. Now at that point you might think, okay, is this gonna take off? 
looks as though it might do. We had falling volume there. That's a bit of a worrying sign. But that particular candle, it was tiny. It's like a little test. Uh, if you've been on the in the VPA book or on the program, you'll know about testing, low volume tests, to test of supply and test of demand. And then on up we go. But what this gives you, what this huge wedge of, of price action and uh, support gives you, it's a platform not only for the trend to develop, and bear in mind that trends develop from congestion phases, that's where they're born. But in addition to that, if you're going to take a trade here, you've got this massive amount here. It's quite narrow because it's based around the volume point of control. So if you put your stop loss below this level, assuming it, it meets your, your risk of money management rules, and let's face it, this is only, this is a 10 point range. This is pretty narrow. So if you set it under here, you know, you've got so much protection. Yes, the market starts to reverse. You might think, okay, is it going to reverse against me? It doesn't, carries on up, another injection of volume going in here, and on up we go, on up the chain. So I just wanted to highlight it because it is on a 15 second chart here, pulling it right the way back, you've almost got, you know, a perfect example of a nice trade to the downside, into congestion, patience, 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 and then you've got a nice trade developing to the upside. So within the space of what, I don't know, half an hour, you can be short and you can be long and you can make money both sides of the market. Now, bear in mind, if you put this particular piece of price action from, I don't know, from 1910, let's say, right the way over to 1940, or 1950 rather over here. So, you know, a half hour, 40 minute chart. If you put it on a much lower time frame chart, then what, it, what is this going to look like in terms of price action? Well, it's going to be kind of like a hammer candle because the market's up here, it's fallen and it's recovered. Overlaying two candles on one another is very easy. It's visualizing things like this, which which really sort of cemented in your mind as to what is actually going on there. Just pull that out again. So it's, there we go. We've got a volatility trigger coming there. And really, then you're just looking at you know what that how that looks on the other time frames. This is it on a three minute time horizon. Similar sort of picture. You know, broke away from the VPOC. Nice candles. Decent volume under there. Then we start to get the buying to the bottom. How do we know there's buying coming in there? Well, partly through the volume that's coming in, partly through the fact that all these candles have got, generally speaking, deeper wicks to the lower bodies, deeper wick, 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 wick. So you know there has to be some buying coming in. If they had wicks to the top, then be going the other way. So it's that's a very, very crude analysis of a candle chart, but you know it is one of the ways of, of just very quickly in other words, what is the sentiment? What is the bias? Is it is it more buying bias or is it more selling bias at that point? And of course, at that point, it is more buying by, uh, uh, bias. So we start to see it rally. Volume's falling away a little bit. You know, it's 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 not looking terribly strong. In terms of where we're going to get to, if we're going to move to anywhere, then you know we're moving now up to the 35,900 level up at the volume point of control. So in terms of jumping in now, it's probably a bit late in the day. Um, to actually grab something from that move because there's probably only about 10 points left in it before it actually hits that particular barrier, which is always going to govern. And the slower the time frame, I've said it so many times before, the slower the time frame, that will always uh, carry more weight than a faster time frame. So the 10 minute chart here for the YM will carry more weight than the five minute, the 15 minute would carry more weight than the 10 and so on and so forth. Um, sorry, just moving over. Just want to have a look at something over here on the other screen. Just want to see what the dollar's doing. Uh, where are we? Where are we? There we go. Okay, the yen is pretty flat at the moment. Um, it's been rising. It's, it's flat. Uh, the dollar's it's been selling off pretty much the afternoon. It's starting to rally a little bit as well. So obviously you're going to keep an eye on that as well. Let's just pop that back down. Okay, let's go over onto the multiples, see what's actually going on in terms of the other two. There we go. Uh, this is the workspace you've seen many times before, I'm sure. This is uh, now we're on the daily at the bottom. So this is the Dow. This is what the Dow is doing. That's on the daily. Um, and it, really no great surprise to see that little bit of weakness coming in, because going back to what I was saying just now, you know, the market was trying to rally the other day. It was trying to rally yesterday and fell back. You know, it's not it's not looking terribly strong. It's got that sort of weak structural look to it again. This is the NQ. The NQ is still trying to drag everything higher. You know, we had this rally here, rolled over. Now we're trying to go up again. 
there's a little wick to the upper body here trying to get up to 16.4 it's come off again but as Anna said you know it's all about Santa's rally and all about shop window this time of year and how the markets are going to end up on a positive note this is the ES this is the S&P 500 which is actually down a little bit so basically the NQ is up a little bit and the Dow and the ES are down a little bit so it's there is divergence but then we've seen it many 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 times over the last uh, two three years it's not always the case that uh, indices will go up together um, as we've got today there is divergence we've got the YM and the uh, ES are down and the NQ is actually up just go over on to the stocks for a moment. Um, there we go. I've actually got TradeStation running as well down here. I've got Apple, dear Apple running. Um, actually, let me just show you something else um, to give you, put this in perspective. This is on TradeStation. Um, so what I've got down here, this is uh, the Dow 30. So these are the 30 stocks in the Dow. Um, and I've got them on a three minute time horizon. And with uh, Trace Station, I've got radar screens. So I've got the volatility indicator set up here. I've got the trend monitor. I've got the trends. And over on the right hand side, I've also got the volume. And really, just what I wanted to show you is um, the actual volume difference in terms of what trades on the primary indices. You can see up here there's 64.5 million, 64.6 million stocks on Apple going through the volume today. And yet, down at the bottom, Honeywell. Is, is not even up to a million today and it just gives you some perspective on how um, significant the volumes are in some of these stocks and and then having said that okay, picking up what Anna was saying about the um, liquidity and how heavily some of these stocks are weighted in terms of their influence if you go to someone like um, Unite where are we this one United Health, there we go. It's down at the bottom. So in terms of volume, it's quite interesting because the the volume on that is is low compared to Apple, and yet the the top five on the Dow are that one, um, Goldman's, uh, Home Depot, Microsoft, and McDonald's. They constitute something like 37, 38 um, percent. So it's not all about. It's not necessarily all about the volume going through. It's about you know what weighting they constitute in terms of the index itself it's been a really nice move on united just pop that up full size so you can see a little bit better uh, there we go it's coming down to the volume point of control here so you know what are we expecting congestion we hit some some reasonable levels here it's quite difficult to see this volume down here because it's so distorted by what went over there just pop that out of the way but i thought it's a nice it's a really nice way of of seeing how much volume we've got going through in terms of the stocks themselves um vis-a-vis -vis how much they influence the weighting on the index so it's not uh, it's not a direct correlation what i'm trying to say is it's not a direct correlation of looking at a stock and saying oh will it trades you know 64 million or 30 million does that mean that it, it carries more weight in the index not necessarily um, so it, it's it's an important point, and all of these things will will be aspects of um, trading stock markets that we will actually bring out in the program itself. Just hopping over the tab here. This is the hot list. Um, I've got Tesla on here. Um, Anna showed you the Tesla post we did, and really the, the, this just reflects it. This was the huge volatility candle that we had, the down day, tons of volume coming in. This is what's been going on today. And as we said in that post, you know, there's going to be a lot of congestion around here. Tesla's actually been one of the biggest movers. This is what I've got set up on this particular time frame or on this particular workspace is uh, these are the uh, dollar gainers on the day. So these are the, the stocks that have gained most just on the day. Uh, it's a great filtering system. And these are the sort of tools that you need to have at your fingertips not necessarily your fingertips per se because obviously you can you can a lot of the a lot of the grunt work of stock analysis you can actually do outside of the market time frame um, you know, we do a lot of the analysis uh, on daily charts you can go through several thousand daily charts quite quickly believe it or not just looking at the candle patterns Anna mentioned earlier on about um, sources which are one of our favorite patterns what you're looking for is the stock that's fallen has then bottomed out 
you're looking for the accumulation by the market makers, which is going to take time. These things don't happen overnight. It's not a case of the stock collapses, um, the volume comes in and then it rockets up again. It never happens like that. The stock market, the stock will fall. It will go into an extended period of congestion. The market makers will accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. And then ultimately over time, they will start to move the stock away from that area and you'll see low volume tests and you'll start to see uh, obviously those regions where, uh, going back to what I was saying about support and resistance areas, when you've had congestion, you've got these very well-defined levels that is when you're starting to, to look for stocks which are starting to gradually uh, break away and break higher if they've been in a fall. And equally, you've got the reverse in an up uptrend. So that's gains on the day. You've got, to, here we go, got losers on the day down there. You can click that on. And this is how fast you can do the analysis. Obviously, intraday, you've got radar screen, which is fantastic for, for doing a, a lot of the scanning work. And then you've also got this tool over here called Market Scanner, which I've got set up as I showed you last week, I think, or the week before, uh, with a very, very simple, um, let's get on there, data, edit data, there we are, edit scan. Got it set up with a very simple scan. I've got this set to a particular number of uh, a price, uh, and then I've got uh, RSI uh, above 50, greater than 50, basically. So anything on here has got an RSI down here greater than 50. There are so many ways to scan, uh, to, to cut, slice, and dice uh, the data, and you know this is the issue, the key issue when you're dealing with stock trading. Whether you're trading the stock per se, or whether you're going to be trading uh, using options, options we will also include. There's got, there will be a huge um, module on options, how to use them, obviously their relationship to open interest, uh, various tactical approaches, because Options are, they are very alluring in the sense that um, because of the low cost, um, it's a very attractive proposition to think, oh, well, I'm only, you know, it's only 30 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 bucks, whatever it may be, uh, for that particular option, rather than laying out, you know, buying 100 stocks uh, at $100 or whatever it may be, $50. They are very uh, seductive in that sense. And that's why a lot of traders get drawn into them, primarily because they are seen as cheap, um, even more so when you're trading weekly options. Um, and the the upside, of course, is that with an option, assuming you're you're not uh, trading naked options, but if you're just uh, either buying buying calls or buying puts, you know what your risk is because it's the cost of the premium. Simple as that. So they have a lot of benefits, but they also, they are terribly misunderstood. They are mistraded by traders because, as I say, they go in on that seductive basis of trading an option because it's, oh, it's, it's 50 bucks and, you know, I get to control all these stocks. You have to understand what goes on behind the option. It's, it's much more complicated than that. But having said that, they have a place in the market. They are terrific instruments to trade. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, we were trading them very, very heavily in covered calls. That's what we used to do. That was our, our chosen tactical approach. And it's a question of finding a tactical approach that you enjoy, works for you and makes you money. Basically in cover call writing, you are renting out a stock. If you have the cash to do it, it is a great way to trade because you're not trading naked and you're also commanding a premium from uh, the, the option holder. You are basically selling the call uh, and uh, developing, a, you're renting your stocks basically in that way. Let's just drop that out of the way. So that's Tesla. Where are we going? That's Apple. It's on the way down at the moment. Nice little run down there uh, for Apple. This is on the one minute, two minute, three minute, and the five minute. Breaking away from the volume point of control up at the top here. Let's just pop the one minute. There we go. Let's see what's going on here. This is what I mean when you get these little rallies. You're maybe short here. You know, you see this injection of volume coming in. Has the market gone anywhere? No, you've got resistance above. You've got the accumulation distribution indicator, very strong level above here. So that's nice to see. Lots of volume going into that candle. Wick to the upper body didn't go anywhere, you know, and it's almost, well, it's more than actually double this candle. So if this candle, just, just picking up what Anna was saying about benchmarking, um, and it's what you do all the time. You know, you're looking at this one, you're trying to compare it. What am I going to compare it with? Well, I compare it to this one. You know, look at the volume on this one. You know, that's what we saw. Look at the volume on this one. That's what we saw. We had a ton of volume going in here. Is this going anywhere? No, great sign. Real load of effort going in. What's the result? Not what it should be. Volume price analysis is about really about one thing. It's 
whether price and volume are in agreement or are they in disagreement. If they're in agreement, happy days. If they're in disagreement, start your analysis and, and discover what it is the market is telling you. More weakness here, more weakness here. We've got pivots to the upper body here. You know, absolutely fine. On down we go. We get rising volume, falling price. That's great to see. We're into some congestion here. We're still down to the downside. The trend monitor at the bottom here, solid red throughout. You know, absolutely rock solid confidence. Same over here. Trend monitor's red. Transitioned over to red over here as well. And even over onto the five minute. It's not a huge move, but certainly, it, you know, there'll be traders trading that intraday purely because of the volume that you've seen 60 and a half million going through the market you know is more than enough and this is 20 cents 30 cents you know more than enough to trade on an intraday basis yes you could trade it through the option of course you can um, but you know you've got to be aware of of all sorts of things with options the time particularly the erosion of time which is one of the key things and there's a lot of others as well just go back i know we're over time a little bit um, where else are we going to go? That's all right. Okay, let's just go over to gold, see what's going on with gold. Bullish on gold. Let's just pop the daily chart, just move that out of the way while they load up. There we are. Bullish on gold at the moment, had a bit of a down day yesterday, tried to rally. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, 1900 plus. If it gets through $1,900 uh, per ounce plus, then, you know, we could see to 2000 and beyond. And bear in mind that with all the the talk and the chatter and the noise about inflation, uh, the traditional relationship is one where gold should benefit. It's not a given, um, but typically that is where once inflation starts to bite and is seen as real, and let's face it, you know, we're all seeing it. It doesn't take the brain of Britain to work out what's going on, um, then you know gold should be a beneficiary. The key level for gold was at 1840. We've wrote, written about it multiple times. It got through that. Hopefully that will provide a platform of support for it to get on up to 18, uh, up to $1,900 an ounce and beyond. But that's where gold is right now. Oh, sorry, drop that out of the way. There we go. And in exactly the same way, all the VPA lessons on here, it doesn't really matter what the chart is. You know, it, it's, it makes no difference whatsoever. I can, you can show me a chart without the instrument on the top. It, it, the principles are exactly the same, makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. Trading on Renko is just a terrific way to, to trade. Just move that back down. Multiple Renko charts. I've mentioned it many times before. This was the rally we saw on the 15 second chart. Um, this is on multiple Renkos. This is with the Renko optimizer. This is on the YM. This one's set up to four. This one's set up to five. And this one's set up to eight. And they are basically matching the time frames below. So this is a 15 second, a 30 second, and a one minute, one minute time frame. It's a very, very powerful way to trade. The Renko optimizer, I'll just reset them just to see if they're actually at the right uh, settings. 15 second. It goes off, works it out, tells me I need to be at a three brick size. So it was a four brick size before. So we just readjust that to a three brick size. That was the, uh, just put that up full size. That was the move lower. Then we had the rally here. We've got the trend dots on here. The trend dots will always change first. The trend indicator, it will go through the candle, come out the underside and come to the bottom and start pushing up, pushing up. Then we get a little bit of congestion, goes into gray, but it carries on up. More congestion into congestion, goes gray, comes out the other side, comes up, still going up. And the trend monitor at this point, as we transition from red into blue, it will come after. The trend monitor will always follow after the trend dots. The trend dots will change first, the trend monitor changes second, simple as that. I'll just flick this one over, this is now on 30 second. And the beauty of trading with a non-time bearish chart, this is on five now, so this is five points. So this, each of these bricks here is worth $25 at $5, $5 a point. If you're on the big Dow, it's $25 a point times five. I'll let you do the maths. And finally, over onto the one minute, we'll just reset that one. So this is on three, this is on five, and this is on eight now. So that's $40 a brick, which is very nice. Thank you very much. There we go. And then at the bottom here, you've got the... Um, the reason we run them with the time-based charts alongside 
is because then you can do your VP analysis down here, but you also got the beauty of trading on a non-time-based chart above, and a, and a non-time-based chart will reveal one thing that a time-based chart never does, and that's momentum. Because there is no time aspect to how quickly these bricks build, they're built on a different metric. They're not built on time, they're built on how quickly three points go up or down in the market. So they are purely independent of time. And if the market is rapidly mo is moving rapidly, then these bricks will form rapidly. If the market is sluggish, they will be sluggish. It's as simple as that. You never see that on a time-based chart. And that's the beauty of trading non-time like Renko and also Tick. Right, I'm going to um, stop there, I think. Let's just go back down onto the futures. There we are. See where we are on the five minute. Okay, so on the ES five minute, we're right down on the VPOC, so that's not going to go anywhere fast. We're on the VPOC on the NQ, and it looks as though the YM is probably going to lurch its way back up to the VPOC if it's going to get that far. So not a great deal of price activity left at the moment, certainly from an intraday pricing perspective, certainly if you're trading indices as well, um, but there's always something going on in the stock market, obviously, in terms of stocks. Right, let me just wrap up very quickly. <clears throat> this is where you'll find all the indicators at quantumtrading.com. Got TradeStation, TradingView, which is hugely popular, NinjaTrader 78 and MT45. We are actually working flat out on NinjaTrader 78. I will show you a couple of things tomorrow. Kind of run out of time, but the uh, our development uh, guys, uh, our development team are just working flat out on that right now. They are updating, they're also enhancing some of the indicators, bringing over some of the things that are available in both TradeStation and TradingView, porting those across. Um, and they're also working now on the market analyzer. So if you have the full package on NinjaTrader, you'll get all that stuff free as always. Um, because we will be basing the stock, much of the stock program around NinjaTrader, which is why we're working on, on building that up. We're working on NinjaTrader 8 at the moment. And of course, we'll have to do have to do Ninja Trader Seven also. Just to remind you, if you if you've bought an indicator in the past, and we have customers going back, I kid you not, ten years or more, um, who bought something in that time period, um, and then decide that they've come back to trading and maybe they want to upgrade to something, we give you a credit. You are always on our system. We always know what you've bought. Um, so whether you've bought one indicator or bundle of indicators or maybe you want to upgrade to that or you want to upgrade to the forex education program or you might want to upgrade to the stock trading program when it's rolled out you will always get a full credit for whatever you've bought in the past there's no question about it it's just what we always do the other thing we also also always do is when you invest in a full package with us you get all future indicators we develop free of charge and everything comes with a 24 7 support program and also um uh, what was I going to say? Huh. All future development, all future developments, are you never pay any more basically because all future developments, whether they're upgrades, enhancements to the platform, whatever they are, we do it and we don't charge. It is as simple as that. This is on a site where you'll find all the analysis, all the books are up on Amazon, uh, both in Kindle and in paperback format. So they are all there and you'll find we, there's a load of box sets down here, which we developed last year as well and all the links to all the various sites. And that's the Forex program. And believe it or not, we have a lot of stock traders on this program now because um, they have begun to realize that the Forex market sits at the heart of everything. Because if you think about it logically, when the market sentiment changes from risk on to risk off and assets are bought and sold in bulk, the first thing they have to do is to be converted to cash and then they come out of cash and they're converted into another asset class. So all of that, that river of money, if you like, goes through the Forex market. And that is why you know, currencies are so key to sentiment and what is going on in terms of sentiment. So we have a lot of traders in there. The, a lot of the trading principles are common, whether you're a Forex trader, whether you're a stock trader, doesn't matter. Deep dive into volume price analysis and everything else. There's the relational aspects to it. We look at bonds in deep detail. Uh, and everything else. So it, it's all there. So it is a Forex program. Yes, it is Forex centric, but we do have an awful lot of stock traders on there now as well from all over the world, I'm delighted to say. 
So that's it. Thank you very much indeed for coming along today. Hope you've enjoyed it. We will be back tomorrow in uh, the Forex webinar, which starts at 7.45 our time. So we will see you then, bright and early uh, UK time. Thanks very much indeed for coming along today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. See you soon. Stay safe. See you soon and bye for now.